Hi everyone, this is Terry. Today we're going to talk about entry exit points. And the reason that this is important, when you use the shapes tool, you have the ability to look at the entry exit points. You do not have the ability to see entry exit points in either a stitch pattern or with text. And to show you this, let's go into the view for a stitch view. And the first thing that I want to mention is I've selected a hoop that and a, with a multi-needle machine. That way you can see the scissors so you can see where it'll cut between the threads. This doesn't mean when you save the design that you can't save it in a hoop for your regular sewing machine like a Luminaire or a Destiny or whatever sewing machine you might have. The, if you look at the stitch order, what we're doing is we're stitching out this rectangle. Then you see the thread is trimmed. It jumps over to the circle. It'll sew out the circle. The thread will be trimmed, and then it jumps up to each letter. And just to show you that very quickly, we'll watch on the screen what happens. And I, I'm running through this very, very quickly so you can see that it jumped up to the E. All right, now what I want to do is let's go back to home and let's click on the selection and I want to go ahead and just eliminate the text so that we can get that out of the way and talk about these two objects. All right. Talking about this again, let's look at what happens by moving the slider slowly. So it started right here where I have the little hand with my cursor, jumped over here and it starts stitching. Then it comes back and it starts the stem stitch. And you notice it stops the stem stitch right here where this little plus sign is. Then it moves over to this point right here where the hand is on the cursor and jumps up and starts digitizing the fill stitch. And now it's completing the stem stitch and ending right here. Now to show you that, let's look at the entry exit points. So we'll choose the select tool and the first thing we want to do, if, if you try to select both objects or all your objects and you go to select entry exit points, you won't see anything. So what you need to do is you need to select one of the objects. And because this stitches first, we'll select the rectangle and we'll select the entry exit point. Now what you see is that the L1, L2 stand for the outline stitches, and you see the R1, R2 stands for the region stitches. So if you recall, let's go back to the stitch out. It started right here. That was the region, and we'll stop it. So you see where it shows R1? That's where it started. Let's go on and continue the play out. We'll speed it up. Well, we're not doing very good speeding it up, so let's do this. Now you see that it's finished that, and I actually went faster than I wanted, so let's try this one more time. Let me pause it and grab it. There we go. It's kind of like catching a lizard. Okay, so you see that it will stop that region right here. Now it begins the line or stem stitch. Okay, let's stop this and let's go back into that view. So these are the entry exit points and when it finishes here, it'll jump over to L2, which is where the ending stitch is for this shape. 
Now let's select this object. And when you look at the second object, what you'll see, you'll see the R1, meaning the region where, where it ends, and you see the L1, L2, R1, R2. So this gives you an idea of what these points mean. Now, what if I wanted to have the closest join of these two points? Let's go back and let's select this object, which is a rectangle. And what I want is I want it to start and stop right up here near this corner so that when it jumps over to the circle, that it makes the closest join. That means that I need to move all my starts and stops over to this point. So let's do that. So we'll select this, and what we need to do is we need to move them all. Sometimes it, it might help if you change your, um, your view, turn off the stitch or hide the stitch, for, for instance, for your outline. But you can see that I'm moving these more or less at, at, at the same time, and I want them to be on top of one another. So and if I don't have them exactly on, on top of one another, it should be OK. We'll look at it in a moment. Now let's see what happens. So it's going to start sewing. It started up here in the corner because that's where my start stop was. And it completes the stitch out in that corner. So now let's stop and go back and look at the circle. But let's watch the entire stitch out because I want to show you that what's going to happen is it's Actually, I need to select everything so that you can see it. So just a moment, bear with me. Now we'll see all of the stitch out. So let's start the simulation. And you can see that it jumped down here to the bottom. If I don't want that big jump stitch, what I'm going to do is I'll move the start stop up here. So let's go ahead and edit that. We'll choose stop. And this time we want to select. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong thing. Let me go to select. And I'll select that object. Now I want to go in and select the entry exit points. So I'll go ahead and I'll start moving them. So there's L1, and we want to move L2. Now we'll move R1 and R2. Now let's see what happens when we play this out. We'll go ahead and choose the selection tool and click off, and let's go ahead and play this out. And let's look at, let's select everything. So you see what happens is that it's clipping all the threads right here. There's a very small jump stitch between these two points, and it's clipping its thread. And this is one of the things that digitizers try to achieve, is they try to achieve connection points so that they don't have huge jump stitches. I remember years ago, when I bought a, a FOF 7570 and it did not cut the jump thread. So you, you sew out a beautiful design and you spend, spend most of your time cutting these jump threads on a design. Now sometimes you cannot eliminate jump threads, but where you can, it's nice to be able to have connection points so that you can eliminate some of these jump stitches. Now let's talk about 
entry exit point and stitch angles. If you notice this design, I can tell just by looking at it that it's going to sew from the corner down to a point, then it'll go over to the other corner, and it is ending right here. If you notice, you can see the little line of stitching where it marries up. So I know that it's starting right here in the center just by looking at it. Let's play it out and see what happens. So that's exactly what happened. So you can see that as it stitches, we'll speed it up. It gets down to the this point right here and it jumps over to this corner and it completes its stitch out. Let's stop it. So let's look at the stitch angle. You can see that that line is in relation to the stitch angle. And there's, there's one thing to look at. We'll I'll move it down to about right here and we'll see what happens. So that's 30 degrees. All right, let's go ahead and play it out again. And now what it did, and let me stop it. It stopped right here, and then it started filling in this corner. So you can see that the entry exit points to a certain extent affect the, the stitch angle. Let's undo so that we can go back to where we were a moment ago at, at 45 degrees. And let's see what happens if we move our entry exit points over here to the corner. So we'll select with the select tool. And then we'll choose the entry exit points. And we're going to move them over around by this corner. Okay, the first thing that I noticed um, on the screen in realistic view is that I don't see that line again where the, the stitches meet. So let's play this out. So we'll play this slowly here. So you see what happened when we changed the entry exit with that stitch angle? We were able to control the appearance of that stitch out. And this really becomes important depending on the type of fabric you have and, and the surface. If, for instance, I mentioned if you were sewing on a hat on a curved surface, you need to start in the center and flatten down some of the areas of the hat where it joins and then you need to to adjust your stitch out to conform to the shape of that hat. If this was a patch, you wouldn't want to see that that line where those stitches join. So this might be a good choice for you to improve the appearance of the stitch out. I hope this information has been helpful, and I hope you have a safe and happy holiday and a happy new year. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please let me know, and please like and subscribe to my videos. Thank you.